Hi, and this micro lecture is on heat flow and equilibrium. So we're going to talk about what happens when heat actually flows and what is this term equilibrium. As always, three more bullet points worth of notes, a one and two sentence summary, and you need to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so let's think about this for a second. When you put a red hot piece of metal, like this one right here, into some water, what happens to the metal and what happens to the water? Go ahead and pause the video, think about it for a second. All right, well, clearly, when you do that, the metal cools down. It goes from red hot to normal-ish temperature or just slightly warm. And on the um, kind of other hand of that, or the other side of that, the water gets warmed up. So what we have is that the metal actually warms up the water and the water cools down the metal. Now, if we left them there long enough, what would happen is the metal would actually reach the exact same temperature of the water. It's not too hard to kind of imagine that. What we say is happening in physics is that the two have reached thermal equilibrium. What that means is there no longer is any heat flow from one to the other, or any net heat flow, I should say. So in this case, the metal is the same temperature as the water, um, and since temperature determines the direction heat flows, if they're equal, it's not really going to flow, or if it does, there's going to be an equal amount flowing the opposite direction that cancels it out. So that's what equilibrium is, um, specifically thermal equilibrium, but in context we'll often just say they reach equilibrium. So let's practice that a little bit. So if we've got two blocks, one block A is really hot, one block B is cooler, and we put them together, heat is going to flow from the high temperature object, object A, to the low temperature object, object B, or block B. Um, and this is going to continue to happen and happen and happen until they reach the same temperature, just like what happened with our uh, metal going into the water. So in this case, we have two things that start off at very different temperatures, and uh, the natural way for things to happen is that they will eventually reach the same temperature, and that is thermal equilibrium. So energy is conserved in this case, and this is why we're including this here, um, kind of tying it back. Uh, energy is conserved because whatever heat, or sorry, whatever um, thermal energy is lost by block A is doesn't just disappear, it actually goes into block B. And if it doesn't all go into block B, then we can actually calculate how much goes into the air around it or things along those lines. Again, we can account for it if we look hard enough. So what that means is the energy kind of lost by A is the same as the energy gained by B. So the net amount of energy, or the total amount of energy in this case, doesn't change. And so that's how we know that energy is conserved, and we can calculate this. So one last kind of thing for us to consider before we move on. Um, I want you to think about this for a second. We've got a cup of hot water and a cup of cold water. Let's pretend they have the same amount of water in them, uh, about half a cup each, and we're going to pour them into this uh, singular cup right here. What's going to be the temperature of the combined uh, hot and cold water? Go ahead and pause the video, think about it for a second. All right, so if it's equal amounts of hot and cold water, what I'll tell you is that we basically average the two temperatures, or we find the midpoint in between them, and that's going to be the final temperature. Now, this assumes that it is the same type of stuff going in, meaning it's water in both cases and not like oil in one case and water in another, and it also assumes that uh, they're equal masses of each of those things going in. Now, if we play with that a little bit and instead imagine a case where we pour in extra hot water and less cold water, we can very quickly think that, well, the water inside of here is going to be a little bit warmer than 50 degrees because it's going to edge towards uh, the warm side since there's more of that. And if instead we poured extra cold water instead of extra warm water, then we can very easily imagine that the water in here is going to be something a little bit less than 50 degrees. Um, in this case because there's extra cold water there. So the average will skew. To calculate that, you do a weighted average, if you know what that is. But one thing to note is that because energy is conserved, no matter what we do in terms of uh, the combination of different things, uh, it means that no matter what the mix is, we can never get something that is above 75 degrees or below 25 degrees. Uh, because there is a set amount of kind of thermal energy between these two, we can mix and match and things along those lines, but we can't all of a sudden create extra thermal energy to make the water hotter, and we can't just like get rid of or make extra thermal energy disappear to make everything cooler. 
Um, so this is where kind of the conservation of energy principle applies to this. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. So one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.